Dorks of Yore. Hey guys, I'm Pat Kilbane. Welcome to RPG Science, where we explore the physics and biomechanics behind tabletop role-playing games. In today's episode, we are talking about strength bonuses. Most RPGs give a combat modifier of some kind for a character's strength, and D&D in particular has accorded two hit and damage bonuses for high strength, going all the way back to the brown box edition. So let's pop the hood and take a look at the physics underlying strength bonuses. We'll start with the example of a fighter who is of average size and swinging a viking sword. If we consider the fighter's strength score as representing the muscle force he can generate, that brings us right away to Newton's second law, or force equals mass times acceleration. If the mass in the system remains constant, in this case the mass of the fighter's body and the weapon he's swinging, then acceleration will increase in direct proportion to force. That means if the fighter has a 300 pound bench press, he'll theoretically generate twice the acceleration of a similarly sized fighter with a 150 pound bench press. Knowing the relative acceleration, we can look at this formula for velocity and can see that change in impact velocity is proportional to the square root of the change in acceleration. So for a fighter with double the strength, his impact velocity would be the square root of two, or 1.41 times that of the weaker fighter. So how does this translate into D&D terms? When you compare all of the 5th edition strength bonuses to their calculated Newtonian counterparts, you can see that each one point of strength-related damage bonus corresponds to about a 10% increase in impact velocity. Looking at the two-hit side of things, I would refer to the equation for elapsed time. Here we see that the time it takes to execute the swing is inversely proportional to the square root of acceleration, and the execution speed of an attack is inversely proportional to the time it takes, which means that the execution speed increases exactly as impact velocity does, in proportion to the square root of acceleration, and therefore in proportion to the square root of strength. If we consider 10 to be an average two hit roll, then these increments of two hit bonus are remarkably accurate. This is indicative of excellent design and yet another reason why I'm a big fan of 5e designer Mike Merles. Go Mike! There are, however, a couple of big things to consider with this thought experiment. First of all, an increase in strength usually entails some increase in body size, cross-sectional area in particular. So looking at the F equals MA equation, the heavier body would eat up some of that strength-related acceleration. Secondly, there is a limit to how fast muscles can contract, even if they are super strong. So if the fighter in our example were using a light weapon, the contractile velocity of the muscle may already be maxed out, giving him no speed benefit for added strength. In that case, swing speed would become more of a dex issue, but the heavier the weapon, the better the Newtonian model will fit. So now you can have little physics daydreams when your massively strong character is dicing up minions with his battle axe. That's all for now. Have fun at the game table, and if you want to see more content like this, please support us on Patreon. See you next time.